I was there when he breathed his last breath. But I was there when he came into the room. I was there when he lived again. I was there. We supped together. We spent time together. I was there. I write this so that you may get joy. If I tell you something that's hard to believe, are you going to believe me? But what if I tell you, tell you something that's hard to believe, but I said, I saw it, I felt it, I touched it. Are you going to believe me? That's exactly what John was trying to do. Trying to establish credibility. Any doubt, he was trying to do away with. There are a lot of people that doubt today. Where's God? We have movies out that say, is God dead? Why do people ask the question, where is God? They ask the same question. That's the very same question that we're asking only a few years after Jesus' death. And Mark, Mark 1, Jesus is approached by a leper. And the Jews regarded leprosy as a divine judgment. It was a sin, basically. Something that they had done, that person had sinned, and so they were given less leprosy as a judgment. Leprosy was viewed as abandonment. It was abandonment by God and abandoned by man. Lepers were unclean, considered unclean, and whatever the leper touched, it was unclean. And even the air that a leper breathed and exhaled, people considered it polluted. Because of this, there were no cures even attempted for leprosy. The only true remedy for leprosy was isolation. Isolation from everyone, even your family. And as leopards walked the roads in the streets, they were marked because their heads were uncovered and their clothes were tattered and worn. And they yelled out, unclean, unclean, so that no one might touch them or touch anything that they might touch. <laughs> Jesus had just came down from the mountain. There was a great multitude that had followed him. And that leopard, that leopard came forward to worship him. I can imagine the fear that he must have had from the crowd. A fear of being beaten. A fear of being stoned. Because he dare approach Jesus. Because he dare approach the crowd. All I can see is that Imagine his desperation and the courage that it must have taken for him just to approach. And the leper says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus was moved with compassion, the Bible says. He wasn't worried about any type of ceremonial law or ritualistic law. And he just stretched out his hand and he touched him. He says, I am willing. Be cleansed. Now we know that Jesus could have he could have healed him without even touching him, couldn't he? He could have healed him without even touching him. But he had a point that he wanted to prove. His message was, I don't care about ceremonial laws. 
His message was, I care about the people. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I care about this person. And the leper's faith and courage was rewarded. His skin became healthy. And all the nerve endings, they started working. And his muscles started flexing. And he was made whole. See, Christ didn't care about what anyone else thought. See, that's the problem that I think that we have with the world today. Too many of us care about what other people think. And so that's why people say, we have movies, he's God dead. And I think about the leper. How long had it been since someone had touched him? How long had it been? What is it like for any of us to have gone without somebody touching us? It's kind of a loneliness, isn't it? How many of you probably had a handshake this morning, but how did it feel? Did it warm your heart? Or maybe you had a hug. I had a hug this morning. Right, Kathy? But this man had nothing. This man had nothing. He had been abandoned by everyone. Everyone but God. There's a, the Bible is full of abandoned people. In Mark, there's a certain woman who had a flow of blood. And she had gone to many physicians. She was unclean, unable to go to the temple, able, unable to come in contact with people or things. Anyone or anything that she touched would be considered unclean. She spent all that she had with the physicians just trying to find that cure. And she was no better. And she was desperate. She was desperate just like the leper. And when she heard that Jesus was coming, she made a plan and she came behind him, the Bible says. And there was a crowd around him. And she said, only if I could only just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. And she did that. And immediately, she was made well. And Jesus turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched me? In fear. Because she was afraid that everyone knew that she was unclean, that she would be judged for touching me. Trembling, she fell before him and told him the full truth. I touched you. And Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. You see, she had heard about all these miracles that Jesus had performed. And she still faced rejection by others. Her desperation drove her past her fear to grab the hem to Christ's clothes. In the Bible, there are other people that grabbed the hem of Christ's clothes and they were healed. You see, Jesus challenges us. Don't worry about the cultural laws. Don't worry about the man-made laws. Don't worry about focusing on perfection. The church isn't a place for perfect people. And if you guys think you're perfect, <coughs> Or any of us think we're perfect, we're done. Jesus said, For the Son of Man has come to seek the lost. And that is what Jesus came for. To 
look for the old and the tattered. There was an estate sale one time, and most everything had been on the auction block. And they got down to one last item. An old fiddle that was beaten and worn. And the auctioneer raises it up and he asked, Who will bid a dollar? Who will bid a dollar? Can I have two? Who will bid a dollar? Who will bid three? And there are no bids. It is old, worn out, abused fiddle. But then an old man from the back came up and he, he grabbed the fiddle and he tuned it up and he started playing. And the music was as beautiful as any angelic choir or chorus that you could hear. And the auctioneer said, who will give me a thousand? Who will give me two? Who will give me three? And the entire crowd got excited. They got excited. And the fiddle was sold for much more than it first began. And the question is, what made the difference in that fiddle? What made the difference was the touch of the Master's hand. Amen. You see, there are a lot of people today that are waiting for that touch. They're wanting to believe in Jesus. They're wanting to believe in God. They're desperate. They feel beaten, just like an old fiddle. They feel like they're full of sin and their life has been used up. And they have no hope. They feel like, I am no value to anyone. And they've been abandoned. They've been abandoned by man, but never abandoned by God. Amen. These people today are looking for the credibility of a Savior. And that credibility comes through you. And your testimonies. And your actions. And your touch. Whether it's physically touching their hand or touching their hearts. To touch the Master's hand is for us to love. And today, I just encourage you to look for the worn, for the battered. And for the beauty. And help them to feel loved by the Master's hand. Amen. That fiddle, I want to tell you, there was a master that could play it. And his name was Ridgeway. He was my great grandpa. And that's been handed down to me for, you know, several years. My grandpa used to um, set by the telephone. How do you remember party lines and the old crank telephones? My grandpa would sit there and people would call. And they'd ask for someone, you know, they'd ask for a song and he'd play songs. So instead of radio, instead of television, and he had my great grandpa. I think about just how many lives that he touched with his music. The happiness that he made. And maybe people could forget. So I'm just encouraging you to reach out. Spread some happiness. And let people know that God is alive. Amen.